So I was just going to make a video and then I saw this on my wall and that doesn't look very friendly. My goodness. Hello everyone and welcome to this, the latest episode of Book Time with Elvis and <laughs> apparently Incy Wincy Spider and, uh, and me Mark. Uh, although I have to say that Incy Wincy, or not so Incy Wincy Spider as perhaps it should be termed, has left the building. Um, I don't actually believe in, in killing spiders and if it had been smaller I probably would have allowed it to, to stay. Uh, although I don't think I've seen that kind of spider before so I was a bit worried, especially with Elvis running around. Uh, I wouldn't want him to get bitten or anything so he has left the building. I don't know how long he's going to last. It's pretty cold here but hopefully he'll find somewhere he or she I don't actually know uh, I hope it will find somewhere uh, warm to live anyway so welcome uh, to today's uh, video and I'm going to talk about uh, a book I read this week uh, I talked about two books that I uh, one that I finished and the other that I'm still listening to, both were audio books, in the last video. And this was a book I read, uh, today I'm going to talk about a book I read on my Kindle. And it's by a historian I'm really um, liking at the moment. I've read, this is the third book of hers I've read, and I think she's fantastic. And it's Alex von Tunzelman. And she's quite a quirky historian. Uh, she also does, uh, works as like a historical advisor. Uh, in films and television series and things like that. Um, I read, the first book of hers I read was Indian Summer, which was kind of like a um, biography of um, Lord Mountbatten, uh, Gandhi and Nehru, and all about the last days of the British Raj and the partition of India. And it was fascinating, uh, really, really excellent. And the second book um, I read of hers was Real History, that's real, R-E-E-L, uh, and it was about um, historical depictions in films and television and um, things they get right and wrong and stuff like that. So that was also very interesting. And this one is called Fallen Idols, 12 Statues That Made History. There you go. Sorry about the glare. But yeah, Fallen Idols, 12 Statues That Made History by Alex von Tunzelman. And it was excellent. Excellent. Um, it's very on topic. Uh, she even writes about uh, the Black Lives Matter protests and uh, the death of uh, George, the murder of George Floyd um, in, the, in the introduction. And she's very up to date with uh, the statues that she discusses in that. So she did, as, as, as the title mentions there, she discusses 12 uh, statues that were torn down uh, during various points of history. She starts off with a statue torn down of King George III in New York a few days after the Declaration of Independence. Then she moves on to a statue to William Duke of Cumberland, the man responsible for the um, carnage at the Battle of Culloden. Uh, she goes on to Joseph Stalin, Rafael Trujillo in um, uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, King George V, King Leopold II, and his poor, well, horrendous treatment of his personal domain, uh, the Congo, uh, Lenin, Saddam Hussein, Cecil Rhodes, Robert E. Lee, Edward Colston, who you might not know, he was a statue of a Tory uh, MP from the uh, 17th century, uh, who, although a uh, prolific um, philanthropist, uh, he made all his money through the slave trade and is estimated to have trafficked as many as 84,000 African men, women and children, with at least 19,000 of them uh, dying on their way to uh, the Caribbean and America, so he was indeed a very controversial figure, and he had his statue uh, torn down uh, during the spate of statue protests, and it ends with the tearing down of a statue of George Washington, so it kind of goes full circle from George III there uh, through to uh, 
George Washington. Um, she, excuse me, I just want to bring up my notes that I have for it. Um, there we go, yeah. Uh, so she has a very uh, good introduction. As I said, she mentions the, all the recent events and she mentions certain famous instances of um, of uh, traffic, uh, traffic, sorry, statue. I, I want to say it's not defenestration. It must be like deplinthing or uh, something like that. There must be a word for tearing down statues. Uh, directing statues, does that work? Erect, direct, does that work? I don't know. Uh, but um, yeah, she, she mentions a, a few famous instances and uh, one rather interesting one that she goes, I'll, I'll read a bit here. Some feared that this was becoming a frenzy. In the, in the United States, Confederate statues had long been a focus for public protest, but soon statues of national icons and progressive figures were attacked too. Protesters in Madison, Wisconsin, tore down the forward statue celebrating women's rights and another of an abolitionist. A statue of the abolitionist Frederick Douglass in Rochester, New York, was knocked clean off its base. It was unclear clear if the perpetrators were confused anti-fascists or fascists relating, uh, retaliating for the removal of Confederates and slaveholders. The statue of the Little Mermaid, Copenhagen, Denmark, was daubed with the words racist fish. That one was probably just a prank. So yeah, she has a, she has quite a nice um, sense of humour, um, and certainly I was trying to look up uh, about what happened with the Little Mermaid, and it does seem it was maybe perhaps a confused thing or uh, a protest against uh, Disney's um, use of um, racial stereotypes and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, she starts off by talking about or mentioning four different arguments that people will employ um, when it comes to uh, the tearing down of statues. You know, it erases history. Um, it's it's just sheer vandalism uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then she finishes the book by uh, going back to those arguments and seeing why none of them uh, really work. Um, <sighs> The chapters themselves are very interesting. They they provide short biographies and factoids of the uh, various uh, people who are commemorated in the statue, um, and then kind of what happens when the statue is pulled down, and if possible, what happened to it after that. Um, in the George the Third one, that was very interesting because the statue was made of lead. And when it was tore down, it was cut into pieces and actually sent off to a uh, munitions factory in Connecticut where um, the parts that were sent there were melted down into, uh, I think, 42,000 and something musket balls that were then later used uh, against the British. Other parts did disappear. Uh, and apparently, uh, I think it was part of an arm was found in a garden in Connecticut and it was actually sold at auction for around two hundred thousand uh, dollars, which uh, which is quite quite incredible. Um, she mentions things like that uh, one museum in London claimed that there were more public statues of goats than there were of uh, black women or named black women specifically. So there were three statues of goats in London and only two of uh, dedicated to specific black women. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, the, I didn't know much about a couple of the figures, for example, Raphael, uh, Trujillo in the Dominican Republic. He was a horrendous character, um, terrible, terrible person. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I certainly see why, um, they kind of wanted to, uh, eradicate, uh, that part of their past. Um, and, it isn't because of removal of statues, it's because of a collective desire to kind of uh, maybe forget the horrors that he perpetrated uh, on his people. Um, then there were others. Uh, bizarrely, uh, there was a statue of William Pitt in, uh, in New York City, um, which was torn down, uh, but it was torn down by the British. Uh, because he was uh, known to be sympathetic to the cause of the uh, colonists 
and so actually they tore that down while the uh, uh, the revolutionaries themselves tore down George the Third. Um, and uh, going through onto things like uh, in the chapter on King George V, that was very interesting. There's a nice funny bit uh, there uh, where she says, uh, before ascribing any uniquely Indian sentiment to this practice, it should be noted that statues of Queen Victoria are unusually difficult to pull down. Her Majesty was a short and in later life stout woman, often depicted seated and always wearing full skirts. This meant that her statues were approximately the shape of a pyramid, the hardest shape to knock over. So that's why she kind of still stands, I think, in uh, in a lot of the world, whereas uh, standing figures or people sitting on horseback uh, do not. Um, one part I liked as well was when she talks about uh, a bust of uh, Stalin and uh, how that... Uh, the local communist party in one particular district wanted to uh, erect a bust or put up a bust in public uh, to to Stalin and uh, the local authorities said no. Uh, in the end, of course, they put it up at their own headquarters, which, of course, they were allowed to do so as, ironically, uh, it was private property, which I thought was quite, quite amusing. Uh, and yeah, it's it's just very interesting. I mean, I didn't know much about uh, Robert E. Lee. She recounts a few um, terrible uh, instances from his life. I always had the impression that uh, he was somewhat of a, a gentleman. I didn't know that he personally owned several slaves and was actually quite, or not quite, was very harsh uh, with them. Uh, by all accounts, which uh, is not really something that is depicted in the kind of casual uh, introduction to the man. Um, Edward Colson, as I mentioned, I didn't know too much about him. Uh, everything I learned was was learned when the statue itself was was torn down. One thing that was particularly uh, of interest, of particular interest to me rather, was that the Edward Colson statue was erected uh, due to the efforts of a James Arrowsmith. And James Arrowsmith was a local Bristol publisher, uh, and he um, actually published uh, three books that I very much uh, enjoy, and one of them I dearly love. Um, yeah, so this was in the context of James Arrowsmith, in which James Arrowsmith made a fortune in publishing. He put out a run of bestsellers, including Jerome K. Jerome's Three Men in a Boat, George and Weed and Grossmith's Diary of a Nobody, and Anthony Hope's The Prisoner of Zender. Um, so he's the one who kind of commissioned uh, that statue to be put up, though, you know, the statue itself was erected in the 19th century, uh, commemorating somebody from the 17th century. And I think he was interested in it because so many parts of uh, Bristol were named for him and I think he took him at uh, maybe face value of being uh, you know a decent person and this, this this amazing philanthropist he might not have known uh, fully the history of of the slavery involved with that that might have been something that was that came to light more in the uh, in the modern era but anyway, it's uh, it's it's a very interesting read, and uh, as I say, it really fits in with um, a lot of what's been happening at the moment. And she's a very nice style of writing. Um, she has sympathies, I think, with the uh, idea of tearing down the statues. Personally, I'm not in favour of it because I don't think people have a right to destroy. Um, public property because whether it's good or bad it does kind of belong to the local community so there should be um you know discussions and uh, i think they should be removed um you know following a proper process but then you know as she points out that can take a lot of time and i suppose if you have to if you know if you're an african-american and you have to walk past uh, a statue of robert e lee every day uh it might be uh, a bit um, galling, so you don't necessarily want to wait for due process to uh, to take effect and have that statue removed uh, in a democratic way. So I, I, that that is understandable. 
uh, I suppose. Anyway, um, that's that's it from me. Uh, if you if you fancy something, you know, in this nonfiction November that you can uh, dip in and out of, and um, you know, just uh, keep up with 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 kind of current events and whatnot, then I would definitely uh, recommend um, Fallen Idols: Twelve Statues That Made History by Alex von Tunzelman. There we go, Claire included. So from me and Elvis and um, <laughs> the spider who's, who's left, uh, we wish you a, a great rest of your weekend and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.